just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run. Afraid of love, I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. For my misery, always blaming someone else. I'm really into judgment and delay, but only hurting. Everybody, it's Calico, and this is Beyond Your Body, the body. <laughs> it's beyond my body. That's what I'm working on. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, boy, I've had some huge lessons this week, and I know the last Beyond the Body, I said we were starting this topic of body shaming, but. There, there was a topic that came in um, for me, which is, this is the only reason I'm doing this program is to heal my own head. Um, and the, the topic was pain, okay? And I, <clears throat> I just want to relate this to something present that everyone can relate to, or maybe some can relate to. I've been noticing on my feed, because I get a, a glimpse of what the world is doing on my feed, uh, Facebook feed, and uh, you know, there's pictures of Mexican children in cages, and there's a, a lot of upset around this. And my version of this, and this is the topic of pain, whether it's the picture of a child supposedly suffering, or whether I'm making my body real. And feeling pain it's the same thing pain is pain call you know wherever it starts wherever it appears to occur from pain is pain and it's in my mind and I just wanted to share with you <clears throat> an experience that happened this this past couple of weeks um, my oh man for any that know me, they know that there was at one point a diagnosis of cancer given me. And I live within that belief con confine. I, believe, I live within that belief system. And that does create some pain in my head. <laughs> and um, it's an ever constant present reminder to go deeper and uh, continuing to go deeper with Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> so this past week, the last, let me just say, the last doctor that I went to was I think in about 2012. And at that time, <clears throat> I was on oxygen and um, yeah, I was in the shape that I was in. And um, I went in for uh, an x-ray and they said, come back in in four months and we'll re-x-ray and tell you where it's moved to in your lungs, the cancer. <laughs> and at the time, there was no health care system, so I was paying out of pocket. And given I tend to be fairly cheap and, you know, find the cheaper way, I thought, this doesn't make sense to, to pay them, I think it was like $600 for an x-ray, to tell me where the cancer had moved to. I mean, even in my delusional brain, that made no sense whatsoever. So I opted out, and I haven't been to a doctor since. <clears throat> so several weeks ago, I started having some, experiencing some new pain. And given I have this medical background, I had it all figured out in my head what was going on, and it wasn't good news, and um, it was going to get worse. and. You know, I latched onto this idea of pain and made it real. And at the time, I actually even mentioned it in an expression session that David happened to be present to. And he was the first, you know, little um, undoing of this thought stream. So the result of it was, I thought, well, I think I want to go in 
and get some pain meds. Um, I can take them at night and build up a certain amount in my system and kind of not experience pain. So with that being said, I prepared to go to this doctor here in Mexico and there was three recommended to me and I picked one. I just asked Holy Spirit, you decide, I don't know. So I picked one <clears throat> and then I set up an appointment. And at the time, Michael Caruana, who is um, the overseer of La Casa right now, um, he said, you know, if you would like someone to go with you, you know, we can find someone to go with you. And I remember distinctly, because this is so a part of who I've been, and any of you that have known me in my previous existence here in uh, this form know this to be true. Oh no, I can handle this. I've got this. I can do this myself. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. I think that was one of George Carlin's. Anyway, I'm fine. I can handle this. I can do this myself. And um, so I was kind of, you know, bracing for the appointment. And one morning, um, a dear sweet angel here at La Casa, Anna, comes up to me and she just, we looked into each other's eyes and we're just joining for a moment, which we often do here. Um, and she said, I feel so guided to go with you to your doctor's appointment. And my first response was just, I started weeping. And I, and I know myself now, anytime I start weeping, say yes. No matter what is going on, say yes. And <clears throat> so I was weeping and I just said, yes, of course I, of course I would love to have a mighty companion to join with on this. So it was set, we were going to the appointment together and Anna and I started out on our day and it was not anything special. <clears throat> we were going to the doctor and then we were going to Walmart. We didn't have any plans after that. So we went to the doctor and we, there was a coffee shop right next door and we got some fabulous coffee and had some eggs and um, it was a delightful break, unexpected breakfast. And then we went into the doctor's appointment and we were met by this absolutely beautiful Mexican man, 30-something, um, wearing jeans, a white, clean, crisp white t-shirt and flip-flops. And he is the doctor. <laughs> and then he led us into the room. Anna came with me and we sat there at this little tiny table. He had All it had room for was a computer and he sat there with his computer and and he was just saying, how can I help you? And I explained a little bit of the history. And I have to say, I was prepared for poking, prodding, piercing, because anyone that's been through any kind of traditional cancer experience, that seems to be what happens. You get prodded, poked, and pierced a lot. And so I had kind of been harboring this uh, all week since I set up the appointment that this was going to happen and it was fine. I was just going to allow Holy Spirit to kind of take charge of the whole thing. And I was just present to, you know, say what there was to say. <clears throat> the entire appointment was a delight. The hardest question he asked me was, what religion are you? <laughs> and I never know how to answer that. And at some point, I, you know, kind of, well, I love God. And, you know, uh, and then I said, I, I, I'm, I'm. I do A Course in Miracles. I practice the principles of A Course in Miracles. And his face lit up. He was familiar with A Course in Miracles. <clears throat> and he just wrote it down. And, uh, and we went on with the appointment. And, and, you know, I explained the history. And I was thinking, I have no documentation because I left the States with nothing. And, um, you know, I thought, well, maybe I could call the hospice. And, you know, these are thoughts that were going through my mind before the appointment. He never asked for anything. He never asked to feel the tumor. He never <laughs> asked anything. He was just said, well, how can I help you? And I was like, oh, my God. And I said, I just want some pain meds. I want something that I can take at night and, you know, be as clear-headed as possible. 
And so we worked on it, and then he also had homeopathics there, <laughs> you know, my kind of doctor. And I took a lymph tonic. And um, I went out with my magic, and then we went to Walmart, and Anna and I, this whole time, are grinning ear to ear, holding each other's hands, just, you know, I, I liken it to there were rainbows and unicorns and butterflies <laughs> wherever we went. And it was just this magical, magical day spent with a mighty companion. And we went into Walmart and I got a few things and she got a few things and we were just floating, smiling, saying hi to everybody. Just everything was joyous and there was nothing particular going on. And then after that, we went over to this park and we sat by the water and just talked, you know, just chatted, two mighty companions chatting, and it was beautiful. So the whole day was unicorns and butterflies. And I came back and I, I took the meds that night. And after a couple of day to, days, I noticed I'm groggy in the morning. And this is, I mean, you know, this is my mind. I'm just giving you a little glimpse of what's in here. It's not even in here. It's in here. <clears throat> I, um, I got the medication because I was in pain, and it was very helpful. It took care of the pain. I reduced it by 95%. And, and then I found a new complaint that I was groggy in the morning because one of the things I love are my evenings with God, and I get woken up at, you know, anytime and I'm up for like three or four hours in the middle of the night and it's sacred time well the meds are really putting me out I'm sleeping and I'm waking up in the morning groggy and this morning I went out <clears throat> to a little table that I oftentimes sit at with my coffee and just do some praying you know one of the things that I really I heard was you can pray and be groggy at the same time and sure enough, I could pray and be groggy at the same time. And then I also heard, because I was in conflict, it's like, well, should I be taking the medication, you know? And this is what Holy Spirit said to me. And this goes in line with David refers to this as a pencil. <laughs> it's a tool. It's a tool. That's all of the form is. That's all the body is. It's a tool. And it's a tool for communication. And it's a tool for function, to follow purpose, to extend love. If you had a broken tool, if you had a, an apparently broken tool in the illusion, because it's all illusion, you fix the tool. If your hammer splinters, the handle of your hammer splinters, you would tape that up so that the tool could be used in the way that it needs to be used. I'm no different. The tool, and again, my projection was in pain. And I'm working on that, and I'm going deeper with that. And in the meantime, I took meds that made me groggy. So now I have alleviated the pain, but now I have grogginess. And I don't like the grogginess any more than I like the pain. Well, that's fine, but for right now, ridding myself of the pain actually is the bigger issue and the grogginess I can work through much easier. <laughs> so I'm a tool and I'm just using a little magic right now to make me the tool for Holy Spirit a little bit more effective um, in extending the light and love. The lesson today really seems on lesson 170 um, that I really just want to um, place in this pot that we're talking about pain. Uh, lesson 170 is there is no cruelty in God and none in me. And I just, because this is taking me deeper and all I can say is I'm not down the rabbit hole yet. I'm in process. Um, pain is pain. Um, I know right now in the news there's a lot of talk about um, undocumented 
uh, persons, uh, particularly Mexican persons, in the United States are um, being deported, but their children um, are being pulled at the borders and put in cages and jails and things like that because they're not being deported with their parents, or at least not the ones that I've taken notice of. And there's a lot of pain that's coming up for a lot of people. Many friends of mine, and I've had this communication with, with several online, um, is their pain of seeing this is no different than my pain and believing my body is anything but perfect. And um, there is no cruelty in God. There is no cruelty in the Christ mind. That only lives in the delusion called life. And this tool that I'm walking around <laughs> in is just my projection. So, you know, clearing a lot of deep, deep, deeply held beliefs about um, I de deserve to be punished. I mean, it's the same thing that anyone that believes any of these current events that are upsetting to them is going through. Two, um, I just really get I'm on a path with it and I can't defer right now. Um, yeah. So my friends that are suffering in any way out there, either emotionally, physically, spiritually, I want you to just take, take note we are waking up from this dream and that is being provided to wake up. You know, I, I liken it to as a child when I was in a nightmare. I was having a bad nightmare. You know, those ones where you're running in slow motion and you know there's something really, really, really horrible chasing you. And uh, you can't speed up, you're in slow-mo. Um, what I did as a child and I think all children did this. When they really got scared enough, they would wake themselves up from the dream. And I think that's a lot of what's going on right now. We're scaring ourselves. <laughs> We're scaring ourselves awake. And so I, you know, and this goes along with, if you're seeing children in cages and you're upset about it, our purpose is to love. You know, what was it? You know, horrible Bible quoter, but here goes. Um, and when he was being nailed to the cross and or on the cross somewhere in that process Jesus said forgive them they know not what they do forgive love love them for they know not what they do it's like take any upset have the feelings it's important to have the feelings with a mighty companion or have Holy Spirit present have your sadness have your anger scream, rage, let it out. We're pressure cookers. We're mind pressure cookers. And we need to let this stuff up. Get it out of your system and then come back to what is our purpose. Our purpose is to love and forgive. That's our only function. So it's, um, <laughs> so it's, you know, a friend of mine had, we had this interchange on Facebook and he was, very upset about what's going on with the border and, and the U.S. and Mexican border and what <clears throat> what's happening with the children there. And I, I understand that. I mean, we live in a delusion. It's the same delusion that I, I am saying cancer lives in. So I get that we're in, <laughs> we have some serious issues that we need to address here. Um, but they're in mind. And so I say, if, you're, if this is upsetting to you, if anything upsets you, have the feelings around it. Make a safe place where you can scream into your pillow. You know, we have a pool here. I say, scream, go underwater and scream. It's perfect. You know, any place to let this out. Throw rocks if you're out in the mountains. That's why I used to do that a lot. Uh, get it out of your system. Um, and then come back to loving, you know, and really seeing, asking Holy Spirit to see it differently, which is what I did with this pain. I said, Holy Spirit, I need to see this pain differently because it's affecting me and I'm, I'm not happy. And I know 
that's all you want for me is for me to be happy. And you have nothing to do with this or pain or the body or anything else. And I really got in touch with some deeply held beliefs that I deserve pain. That if I don't give myself pain, when God figures out what I've done, I'm going to have hell to pay. And this is, I was raised Catholic, and I'm not blaming anybody, but there, there was a belief system in that particular re religion that babies are born with sin. So I grew up thinking, man, I'm, I'm doomed before I even start the life. Um, and I'm still at this end of the life, I'm still replaying that out, that I believe that I do need pain. <clears throat> but nevertheless, my situation was, I was in pain, I went to the doctor, had a, a miraculous experience with a beautiful Mexican man that was able to just offer me assistance. He didn't touch me, he didn't palpate anything. He just said, how can I help you? Pain meds, he gave them to me. I walked out happy, had a beautiful day. And then, you know, several days later, I'm groggy. I don't like groggy. It's like these are all thoughts that I'm creating to suffer because I still feel like the bottom line for me is I deserve to suffer because that's what I was told. And I believe, I believed so much of what was told to me. <laughs> and then the stuff I didn't believe, I made up other things to suffer with. So um, I'm just saying for all of us, no matter if it's um, a baby in a cage, you know, Oh, I get these great animal, you know, they're like PETA, PETA, <laughs> that I don't, I don't spend much time on. I just slide by them. But it's like there's lots of suffering out in the planet. If you're a form on the planet, you're bent on self-destruction. Because any form in the planet is outside God's supervision. God is home and mind. And if I'm happy and joyous in, in my Christ mind, I'm home. But when I'm believing I'm a form, I believe I need to suffer. I believe form needs to suffer. There's, there's some inherent, and I'm working on this because I immediately this morning when I realized this, that there was so much guilt over the fact that I am even still here. Um, you know, guilt that I'm not taking care of those babies in cages and I'm not feeding starving children in Africa. I mean, these are just all those thoughts of I am responsible and somehow if I'm not responsible, God's really going to be pissed <laughs> and God just wants me to be happy. So as I told my friend who was really disturbed by the images and he's a course student, well, he knows the principles of A Course in Miracles. You know, he was, I don't know how it ended for him, but I was clear he didn't see any options. It was either writing, protesting, and becoming angry at what was going on, or he wasn't in purpose. And I say the purpose is let all those feelings out have them in a safe place that others aren't going to be falling into the error of those feelings. Um, and then come back to love. Come back to Christ. Come back to Holy Spirit. You know, <laughs> it's kind of a sick joke, but this is, this is, this is me. Um, you know, forgive them for they know not what they do. You know, if, if Jesus hadn't really taken that one on in this way, he would have been <laughs> climbing the mount. Goddamn Romans, look what they're doing to me. They're, this is not right. This is so not right. They, no, no, it should be anything but this. This is, this is ridiculous. I don't deserve to be crucified. <laughs> That's not it. You know, I, I think any of the accounts will tell you that it was probably pretty quiet and didn't say a whole lot except father forgive them for they know not what they do it's like really getting this is my delusion this is not home this is not heaven this is the mind which is outside of my form 
that's that's that never dies that lives forever and if I'm holy in my Christ mind all I can do is love everything and I don't love it because it's right I love it because that's what I'm here for that's my function is to love and if I can't love to forgive hmm and that includes children apparently in cages or someone that feels like they have pain in their body. And I'd like to just share a couple things from A Course in Miracles. This is from chapter 19. Free your brother here as I freed you. Give him the selfsome gift, nor look upon him with condemnation of any kind. See him as guiltless as I look on you and overlook the sins he thinks he sees within himself. Offer your brother freedom and complete re release from sin. Here in the garden of seeming agony and death, so will we prepare together the way unto the resurrection of God's Son and let him rise again to glad remembrance of his Father who knows no sin, no death, but only life eternal. So this whole topic of pain is for all of us, whatever our pain source is from. If it's a friend that appears sick, if it's a baby in a cage, if it's a dog suffering, whatever I see as pain, physical pain, it's all within this illusion I call life. And the Course in Miracles is saving me in that all I need to do is to love. Allow the feelings up, if there are feelings there, if I'm getting hooked by images of suffering animals or children or friends in pain or my pain, I'm making it real, have the feelings. And I've had a lot of tears particularly tears over body pain. And it's just to allow those feelings up, have them, and return to my Christ mind, the mind that loves, that mind that its only purpose is to love. And if I can't love, it's to forgive. And that's, that's it. And it's completely doable. And um, I just, I pray that we can all join together in learning this new skill. Because it's a very new skill. And um, I am just so thankful that I found A Course in Miracles and Mighty Companions within, within this particular path that I can join with on this and they will hold the light if I can't if I can't see it at any given moment and sometimes magic is needed and it's for mine to just allow myself to not know go with you know I knew what doctors were going to do but this time the doctors <laughs> didn't do what I thought they were going to do turns out I love my doctor he's gorgeous eye candy and um, he just wanted to help and that's really where mighty companions come in it's like how can I be of assistance here so wherever you find yourself in the world right now if you are in pain I hope you can find some kind of assistance from this um, this particular episode it, God is an experience, and that should be a show for itself, but God is an experience, and to return to the experience of God is a process, and that's the process we're learning with the Course in Miracles. It's to have the feelings, let them up, put them on the altar, and allow to see them differently, and ask Holy Spirit to see them differently, and that's totally available to all of us. So whatever pain you might be finding in the world right now, or in your body, or in your heads, 
um, that's what I have to offer you. Here's from A Course in Miracles also, chapter 19. The body does appear to be the symbol of sin. Well, you believe that it can get you what you want. Well, you believe that it can give you pleasure. You will also believe that it can bring you pain. To think you could be satisfied and happy with so little is to hurt yourself. And to limit the happiness you would have calls upon pain to fill your meager store and make your life complete. This is completion as the ego sees it. For guilt creeps in where happiness has been removed and substitutes for it. Communion is another kind of completion which goes beyond guilt because it goes beyond the body. So for today, with whatever you choose to do, may you find unicorns and butterflies and uh, share with reckless abandon. Much love all. Till the next episode of Beyond the Body, communion with God. Make it a practice. It works. <laughs> Bye, y'all. It was just a tiny mad idea at which the Son of God remained.